Hey guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to another video on AI. So in this video, we'll be going over some practical stuff. We'll try to, you know, do some practical stuff. This is non-scripted uh, video. We'll be doing everything in real time. Uh, but in order to do something, uh, you know, we need some sort of reference. We need some of the experts or the industry leads who have already done some of the things, implemented some of the things specifically on AI agents. So it would be uh, unique in that case. We will go through the video uh, first, maybe, or we will try to break it down into two or three parts where we go to, through the video and we'll try to do some you know, stuff on our own. So let's uh, get started onto it. And uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, uh, consider subscribing. And if you need more, you know, such videos, uh, you can stay updated. You can turn on the notifications and uh, do let me know about uh, the content that I'm posting. Uh, uh, I'm still learning uh, in the field of AI. So the idea is that this you know uh, making this content makes me learn more otherwise i'll not be doing this stuff because i'm not using this in my day-to-day -day projects you know uh, or at work so at least it's, it motivates me to put it out something and for by doing that i'm learning and by doing that you're also learning as well so it's a win-win situation for everyone so let's make it a you know fruitful uh, community so let's get started. So I'll just hit play on this one. So, going. so this particular video is from Microsoft Reactor channel where they, uh, you know, they uh, they try to promote that they want to do practical things rather than you know relying on uh, theoretical knowledge. And that is what we would also want to do. It should be a mix of uh, theory and practical. You learn more by doing practical. And um, uh, you might have seen in my one of my from my one of my previous videos that I did one demo on uh, Azure AI Foundry. Unfortunately, if, since I was not aware of how to use the Azure Cognitive Services, uh, I was charged six thousand Indian rupees, which is approximately maybe forty to fifty you know US dollars. So these are the things that you learn, and uh, if I get to try first, maybe that becomes a learning experience for you as well. So let's see what this video says and what we are going to do. I like it. Let's get started. Awesome. So uh, I first want to give just a little bit of background. I'm sure some of our audience is familiar with AI agents, but just wanted to give a super high level rundown of what AI agents are and specifically multi-agent flows are. Um, so here we go. So what are agents? Million dollar question. I love to sit, most simply put chatbots that can do things. And then there's a more complex definition here um, about a, a system that's capable of autonomously performing tasks. But if you just want to visualize it or think about it in a very simple way, it's just a chatbot that can do more than just call, like talk, uh, question and answer. Um, and they use these, and they are able to do that through these things called tools. And these are these um, uh, interfaces that uh, an agent uh, that so remember guys uh, when we talked about the ai agents we said that it has certain characteristics one is that it should have you know um, exposure to tools or it should have tools for doing the multiple tasks that it is intended to do so that is what uh, i think eliza is talking here they can use to uh, interact with the world so what are some examples of these tools? Um, today we're going to be specifically looking at file search, which is, um, if you've ever heard of RAG, which is retrieval augmented generation. It's the ability to uh, ground your assistant or agent in a data source. Also important to know just from a vocab point, I feel like half of tech is just understanding the lingo. Agent and assistants are used pretty interchangeably. So you yeah. notice I'll, I'll go back and forth in using those two words if there's any um, questions about that. Then two other important tools that AI agents are able to use. One's called a co code interpreter, which allows um, them to run, write and run Python code. So if you use ChatGPT where it generates Python code and then runs it, that's what's going on there. And then finally, and, most ex and I personally think most exciting is function calling um, APIs, which allows basically an agent to call an API, get that information back, and then you're going to give it to you in response. So why are AI agents important and like why, why is there all this hype kind of buzz about this right now? Um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, standard chatbots, while powerful on their own, they have, they're limited. And they can, besides the basic question and answer scenario, 
Um, they're very like kind of locked in and domain specific. Whereas with AI agents, um, they're able to have context awareness, multitasking to a bunch of different things and that, that isn't limited to one specific domain. And they're also bit, um, able to integrate with a lot of different systems through this API calling. And, and if you have RAG, be able to connect to a database. So a lot of... So in short, uh, they want to replace humans. <laughs> the humans who do repetitive or redundant tasks, they want to automate those wherever possible. And that's why, uh, you know, since you have the technology now, so why don't use it? Uh, I don't think we have to, you know, take it in a negative way. I do understand the people who will, you know, who will lost their jobs because of the AI agents. But you, if they are able to learn AI uh, and if they're able to adapt to it, maybe they'll get better jobs or maybe they will, you know, be using the AI agents in a much better way. So. One thing that we also, you know, called out in one of in uh, the recent videos was that the critical the task is uh, the lesser the probability of a human getting replaced by AI agent. So you will have some, you know, tasks where the criticality is not that much. But having said that, even in those scenarios, uh, you know, to uh, to maybe evaluate to have the you know ai agents perform full proof you need some sort of human intervention so that is something that you would require cool benefits would definitely 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 recommend uh, checking this out for yourself um and then finally i think one of the biggest value adds and where we're seeing a lot of experimentation and a lot of exciting um, things going on is with multi-agent workflows. And so this is agents collaborating with other agents in order to get to the best response and, and be able to get um, what people need. So that's what we're going to be diving into today. And so then a quick high level of also what is semantic kernel. BK, uh, BK kernel. perfectly asked this perfectly time. Are we using any specific agent for agentic framework here? So there you go. There you go. Semantic kernel. Um, so semantic kernel is um, Microsoft's offering for um, uh, agentic frameworks. It's a lightweight open source development kit. It also um, allows you to do um, uh, workflow uh, orchestration, but specifically it's been more and more geared toward these AI agent workflows. Um, and so I'm excited to do it. It also works if you're a Python or Java kind of guy uh, or gal, um, you can use that. I'm personally a Python person, so we'll be working uh, with Python today. Okay, let's, but let's, we're here to do AI in real. We're well, AI I mean, real. Jay, Anna, can you put JF's uh, question? Show us the code, please. This was like two minutes into the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is the theme. This is, I actually appreciate this. Show us the code. This is the, what we're trying to do. But before we go, I completely forgot, but we have, you know, I was just going to show some code. And then I know the next question is like, can we get a, this code? Or where is this code live at? Uh, so we're actually going to put all of this in a collection of all the materials, not only from this episode, but the others. So Anna, if you go ahead and put that link, and I say Anna because it's our producer in the background that you don't see, but uh, she's the one directing all this. So perfect. You will see that link below. That is where you'll be able to later on get the code samples that Elijah's showing you, because I know that'll be the next question that we get, as well as any other uh, from the, the last episodes. We will put it all in a nice bracket for you to, to look at, play with, toy, to build upon. Uh, it'll be all there. But Elijah, the code is here. You delivered as I as I, I requested. Yes. So we'll pause uh, here, and uh, I think we will be we will require some some of these files, and uh, we have, would have to download it from uh, the location that they just provided. Uh, there was a I think a teaser or you know some text that was. Uh, running across at the bottom of the screen so or maybe they would have put it in the chat box sorry in the description box so we will look into this but important thing here is uh, for doing this and john we would need access to uh, azure open ai resource and deploying the necessary models before starting make sure you connect to your azure open ai resource and deploying the necessary models Okay, so um, we're gonna hop into the code right now. Important note to start is that before starting, we're gonna be using Azure OpenAI. And if you're not familiar with Azure OpenAI, um, that's the OpenAI models that you know and love, GPT-4, GPT-3.5 Turbo, et cetera, 
hosted on Azure. And so those models, the kind of value add there is those models are subject to all of the uh, Microsoft and Azure privacy, um, security. And so it provides like a, a secure place to deploy those models. Um, go to, it's the, I believe the URL is oai.azure.com. Um, I can also share that link in the chat um, of where you want to go to be able to deploy these models in the first place. And so today we're going to be looking at um, here, I'm going to give this link over to Anna so we can share that, so you can go check that out. Um, and so you want to be able, we're going to be using GPT-40 as well as GPT-40 Mini today, and, and as well as in uh, one of the embedding models provided by um, OpenAI. So let's jump right into it. Um, I think one of the questions, uh, yeah, yeah. maybe people ask this because you mentioned the, mo the models we're using, but is there, uh, when you're working with agents, is there a particular model that works better with the agents or you know something that maybe people should be thinking about when selecting models to to work with these agents yeah i think that's an important question uh so the question that is being asked here is is there a specific model that you know works better as an agent or you know any of the models can serve as the agent so i think any of the models can become an agent it all depends on you know how much are you're willing to pay and what is what is the task that you want to achieve so we'll do one thing now maybe the uh, rest of the thing we will take it in uh, part two but before we end the video let me see whether my azure open ai service is up or not so i'll go into portal.azure.com and this is my email id let me Type in the password. Password was incorrect, so let me just pause it for now. So I've just logged into my uh, portal. It took a while, so but that's okay. Uh, let me see whether we have any Azure Open AI. Services created. I don't think we have. So you can see here we don't have anything of that sort. If we create Azure Open AI service, it would ask for a bunch of questions. Maybe we already created one resource group called AI Playground. So let's select that. East US uh, seems to be a good choice for me. So maybe here we can say test or uh, maybe create first AI agent, or maybe we can uh, just put it as uh, first AI agent or create first AI agent. And then pricing tier. Yeah, this is where I think we have to be careful because Azure Open AI would need some standard on demand pay as you go for input and output tokens. Batch. So we have S0. Oh, Standard on demand. So, what are the options here? Standard S0. Only standard S0 is available. What does it mean? Look at it monthly and So, uh, that is where I think we need to be careful, guys. I believe uh, you know, this is standard on demand one because anyway there is no option for me it's only giving one option which is standard s0 but i don't know whether we can create this or not so i just have to be absolutely sure whether we can use this and i can afford it uh, so we will continue this uh, demo or a tutorial uh, we will refer to the video will go, go in the same uh, manner and let me know how how you feel about it again if you have any questions put it in the box below comment box below and we'll, i'll see you in the next video thank you guys and don't forget
to subscribe. Bye guys.